Hi, this is Luke Covey, I'm co director of New Tech Press, and I'm here with Gary Tyerman, the CEO of Univa, uh, a company that's brand new to the de design automation industry, at least as far as I can figure out, because I've never met them before. So, Gary, what does Univa do? Or is well, thanks, Lou. I'm happy to be here. Uh, Univa is actually not a new company in, in, in some sense. We're not certainly new to the EDA or the semiconductor space. Uh, what what we do is develop a product called Grid Engine. Grid Engine's been around for more than 10 years. It's in 10,000 data centers, a fair concentration in the semiconductor space. Roughly 30% of the companies in the space would be using the product. It's a job scheduler resource management tool. So anyone doing designs and simulation would be running on a cluster. We need something to manage the workload. And that's what Grid Engine does. So we build the next generation of Sun Grid Engine, which is called Univa Grid Engine. And what we're um, in business to do is help organizations of any size or of any industry, uh, including EDA, move forward with the product and evolve, meaning they need to have the support of the product, they need the product to be uh, improved with features with uh, functionality, with some additional capability, and that's where that's what our business uh, objectives are. Okay, so how would this break down for a company like Synopsys? Great, uh, great, great comments. Uh, Synopsys actually is a user um, uh, and a customer of ours, um, actually two of the top three EDA companies on there. They would use the product internally as part of their, uh, their building process, which is essentially, as you would understand, running the designs of their end users. Um, but it's really the semiconductor companies that are driving the usage of the product, and therefore the usage or the feature requirements that we have. Uh, so if we look beyond that, we could look at companies like Panasonic, who would use Synopsys tools or Cadence and Mentor Graphics tools uh, in their design processes and their workflow. Again, they've got very large infrastructure, and we optimize it. Um, and they're using that to, whether it's design the chip or the IC or uh, bring the system to market, we help them accomplish that in a timely manner. Um, as you can imagine, these are highly stressed and highly utilized environments with a very high utilization rate, large numbers of jobs in excess of a million or two a month. That puts a lot of stress on the master and how you manage your infrastructure. So your engineers really can't do anything if they can't run their simulations, get their answers back in a very quick and timely manner. The infrastructure is what supports that. The most important piece of software in that stack beyond the power is the schedule. So um, we, we play, I think, a pretty critical role in allowing companies to get their products to market faster. Okay. Uh, can this be implemented in the cloud? Absolutely. We've done that uh, two years ago. We've worked with many um, EDA companies to actually do the testing. To, you know, what is what is the simulation uh, look like in a different environment with virtualization underneath it? Uh, we worked with a couple of the large semiconductor companies a few years ago. We have benchmark studies where we've taken various jobs and workload, run them in virtual machines to see what the impact is on performance in terms of throughput. In some cases, it's zero, there's no, no impact, it's the same. In some cases, there is degradation. Uh, with some of the newer uh, Intel technologies and the motherboards, you're seeing maybe 2% degradation on some jobs. Uh, anything that uh, is doing a lot of read and write outside of the processor, outside of memory, would probably see a degradation. But CPU intensive and memory intensive jobs would actually run roughly the same. So you're actually finding semiconductor companies that are adopting the cloud for the design? What we're seeing is most of them are trying the technology. So what they're trying to do is understand it. Mm -hmm. And so if you ask a question slightly different, it would be why would they be interested in that? I think it's because building data centers is not their core competence. It's certainly an expensive venture. It's certainly a risky venture when you think of the number of years you need to invest in the, in the facility. Uh, get the plumbing in, get the power in. Um, could be a $50 million investment. In the meantime, uh, there's utilization gaps. If you think about how power and cooling is working uh, in, in most current data centers, there's a lot of room for improvement. So it's a peak requirement that needs to be met. 
building a new data center is is a long-term proposition that takes uh, several years to get into uh, for off the drawing board, so to speak, into into practice. So we're seeing a lot of companies are trying to understand it, learning. Uh, we're not seeing a lot that have done it, and I, I don't think it's because the semiconductor companies don't want to. I would suggest it's because the licensing and there's some there's some room for improvement and growth. I think mostly knowledge improvement needs to happen on. How does one make money if you're an ISV uh, selling the EDA tool? How do you make money? What is your price model? It's, it's, it's considerably different when it's a paper use model. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think that would be a bigger gap. Do you think the issues of security are uh, hampering the adoption? Without question. Without question. Do you guys do anything with that? No, we we are a systems management company, so we build the infrastructure that meaning the application environment job needs, um, which can be 100% consistent to what you're running in-house or out-house. Uh, so whether you have security paradigms uh, implemented already, we can, we can replicate those, uh, but generally we're not a security company. So we can work with the security infrastructure, we can integrate the security and do the configuration as necessary with the secure environment. But I think the biggest challenge yeah. Taking security one level deeper is IP protection. What happens if so? Well, that's the primary issue for the semiconductor. Well, absolutely. And you know, no one's going to indemnify to the level that these companies are going to require. But I do think there's a class of workload which is internal, which is repetitive, which is not classified as you know, secret per se, which might be in building, in testing, get test QA that can be low, and there is a class of workload which is at the very early sense of a design rather than the tail end of a tape out where you can take advantage and benefit from uh, deploying it. But I think there's improvement that needs to happen in, in a few areas. I think one, as I said earlier, the licensing needs to be uh, Consider. I don't know that that's an easy thing. I'm not certainly suggesting it can just be solved randomly uh, or quickly. Um, for us, it was pretty easy. We took the number of compute hours in a year, um, just multiply 365 by 24, and divided that out through our uh, our annual price, and that's what it is per hour. So it was pretty easy for us to do that. Uh, keep in mind, we're not uh, we're, we're considering this expansion versus uh, cannibalizing. But it's a very different situation than some of the other companies are. I think the other thing that needs to improve is the infrastructure. Today, uh, I think the benchmark would be Amazon. Amazon is a great infrastructure for doing specific things. It's not a great infrastructure for doing necessarily EDA designs or uh, semiconductor designs and simulation. Um, there's a lot of uh, commonality or generalization in clouds. I think um, the next evolution in that infrastructure is going to be industry-specific capabilities. So I think at some point we're going to find there's a life sciences cloud, there's an EDA cloud, there's an oil and gas cloud, there's an infrastructure, a, a, a clouds for different types of industries. And they're, they're all going to have different infrastructure requirements, different application requirements, and different throughput requirements in terms of how the infrastructure is. Made. We're seeing that begin, but it's still pretty early. Okay. What's the next step for uh, Univa? So our business model is fairly straightforward. Uh, we've yeah. been investing fairly heavily in uh, the design and development and the future of Grid Engine, and um, you know that's uh, not inconsequential. There's 10,000 data centers that have the product. We've made substantial progress over the last uh, 14 to 15 months since we we made the move. Uh, we grew considerably last Q1 of this year. We added more customers than we did in all of last year. We have a lot of room to improve in terms of the functionality and future of the product. So our business strategy is uh, build as much of a difference uh, as quickly as possible as we can versus the starting point of uh, the open source project. That includes adding new products. So we have a uh, license management product that will launch this year and uh, probably around the early Q1. That'll help semiconductor companies optimize yet one more resource in their infrastructure so they can uh, have a predictable cost structure across not just the hardware and the utilization but also up into licenses which is um, a very large cost structure for them. We have uh, next product uh, evolution of our cloud management tool set which uh, probably will launch early 
2013. We're about to release the third production release of Grid Engine in a year, and we'll probably have at least one or two more releases in a year. So that's a lot of work for a small company to, uh, to undertake. We're, we're pretty busy. Uh, I think we'll finish the year um, probably a little ahead of our, our targets. Um, our targets are very specific around helping customers move forward, giving them a, a, a good option for their environments, giving them some peace of mind. Um, beyond that, we are seeing some very um, interesting trends in the industry which are beginning to creep in. I haven't seen it in EDA yet, but I suspect it's the same problem, just we're solving it slightly different, but big data is a uh, the word that everyone's using to describe the problems, I think most of the industries that use technical computing actually are solving. Uh, we're seeing a number of environments in other industries that are integrating uh, big data solutions like Hadoop into a grid engine environment. And so we've got multiple customers now in production. We have several more that are uh, asking us to you know, begin to invest in that. So that's probably another investment stream for us. I think a very valuable way of pulling in uh, big data as a cluster to look at Hadoop, pulling it into a grid engine environment, and starting to share yet another workload class. I think it's really what we're looking at. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It's very interesting. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.